Everyone, hello. My name is Reza Rabaran. I'm going to give you a very, very quick background on who I am, what is Mokkum, and then get straight into how we're different and what makes our project special. I've been involved in the EB5 industry since 2010. Right at the beginning, there was about half a dozen regional centers. I'm also an attorney. I have a law firm that processes EB5 petitions represents regional centers, and I have regional centers which sponsor projects and raise capital for compliant projects. Markham is a licensed entity. It holds through its sister entities that I own licenses to do EB-5 program and the Portuguese Golden Visa program. I don't know if this is a... Can I... Do I click it or do you click it? program wasn't getting renewed and through countless years of extensions after extension when we saw an opportunity that we now will have some certainty in the industry at least for the next five years I decided to set up Mockham to do things a little bit differently. We will not have your standard multi-family project where you come in as a resident. We will not have condo buildings that are going to get financed. What we will have are unique products. And what does that mean for you? We're going to have products that are only with Expedite, have a rural element attached to them, so that for you in the Indian market, you don't have to deal with retrogression. Does anyone know what retrogression is? Have you heard about it? So when you take too many visas, the government in America says you have to go to the back of the line. With rural set-asides, the projects in a rural area, you have a set aside of 20% 20, 20 of the visas. With expedites, when a federal agency sponsors a project, you can be approved in as little as 90 days. Even shorter than that. So, we're not agents, we're licensed, and in every entity that we work, sorry, in every portfolio that we have, in every country that we work in, we have a license to operate directly. We have combination products, that means if you want to do an E2, we combine them in a cookie cutter format where you can deploy that investment within 30 days. You get a passport from another country in combination with a passive managed investment in the E2 that you are the majority owner of, and within 30 days, you have a business up and running, which is service sector, and you can be in the United States on an E2. With your EB5, you have a rule set aside and you can be in the country within as little as, let's say, six months if you can get a quick consular appointment. I'm not going to get into the other countries we deal with. For all intents and purposes today, I want to talk to you about Heart Dairy, which is our EB5 project. So, what's Heart Dairy? It's actually got a very interesting story. Heart is a dairy farm in Georgia. It is the only a2 grade milk producer 
that has 365 days a year pasture-raised cows and certified humane. There's not a second one in America. It is an existing business. This is not a phantom idea. We're not going to go and build this. It's already operating. It just had its second funding round. The company was valued in its last funding round and raised capital at a valuation of $200 million. We already have, we have $25 million of space available for even private investors. $7 million was already taken up during that short window that we had where it was 500 before it went up to 800, leaving $18 million of investment in the project. Why, and what is the project? So the project is a dairy plant. They are building a sophisticated, commercial, high-grade dairy plant in the Southeast United States. At the moment, anyone in the Southeast United States who is a farmer is shipping their milk 800 miles north to Syracuse, New York, or in New Jersey, which is predominantly where the pasteurization plants are based. This is expensive. The cost of fuel has gone up immensely. But even before that, this was an expensive affair and caused a lot of dairy farms to start closing. The idea behind this is that Hart will produce milk locally in Georgia and pasteurize it and package it locally in Georgia and allow other farmers in the local vicinity to use the facility. Because of that, there is a national interest in the United States for this project to happen. And because of that, the USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, is sponsoring an expedite request to USCIS which is now a requirement that a federal agency request the expedite. You can no longer get a senator or a congressman or a governor to do it. It must be a federal agency. The USDA is a big federal agency and wants this plant to be built. That's already been purchased. That is the land, that is the shell, and they are starting. That's going to be the home of the new dairy plant. I haven't actually seen this, so my team put this together, so I'm learning this as we're going along, but I know what these icons mean. Okay, so the project is fully funded in that the USDA is putting in $40 million, the EB-5 is $25 million, any shortfall, which I highly doubt will occur in the EB-5, considering the benefits this project gives an investor, will be taken up by a corporate guarantee from, from Heart Dairy themselves. Job creation. You need 10 jobs per investor. This creates 50. So you have five times the job requirement in the project. You're co-investing with the federal government. The USDA is putting in more money than you to make sure this plant gets built. You have an expedite. Expedite rules changed recently. Before you could get a project expedite, now you have to file it each and every time. USCIS generally gives deference if it's been received before. The expedite has been received. And so it should approve after May 15th expedite requests on the new investors coming in as well. It is in a rural TEA, which means it's 800,000. And we spoke about retrogression. You have the 20% set aside. So even if there is a rush, and every investor here today decides to file on May 15, and you already fill up your 7% allocation. Doesn't matter. In this project, 20% are set aside for rural projects. I am not aware of a single project that has a rural set aside, TEA, and co funding with the federal government. Okay. So, anyway, it gives you a little bit of an idea of where the products are found. You can go into the supermarket, purchase the milk. It's delicious. I've tried it. <laughs> this is a breakdown of the capital stack. That's a total budget, which I just discussed. You have a I-526 guarantee 
the denial. So if your case is denied, your funds go back. You have a completion guarantee. Oop, I don't know what happened there. Completion guarantee that the plant will be built. <coughs> this infographic should be showing you job creation multiple. There we go. So for the project, we need 230 jobs. We're creating 1,310, which is just over 50 jobs in it. So they've had a few funding rounds. That's a projection that the most recent funding round, this company is new, it started in 2018. The growth has been consumer demand. In America today, people want to know that what food they're buying comes from good practices. They don't like, there's been so much exposure on how animals are being treated that People want to know that they're getting food from a happy animal. Because a happy animal is A, makes you feel better, but it's also healthier for you. And there isn't another certified humane, A2 grade, 365 days a year, pasture grazed, organic milk that you can buy. It just doesn't exist in the United States. Even when they say it's, it's pasture raised, it won't say 365. Most of those farms are based up in the north. United States. And guess what? It's minus 30 degrees in the winter and it snows. And I can promise you, those cows are in a barn. In Georgia, that doesn't happen. And these cows, the only shelter they have is a tree. So, project highlights. Well, we went through that. We've got the full funding. We have the expedite, the rules set aside, co funding with. USDA, $800,000 is your investment pressure. That shouldn't be there, but stage two will be, we haven't, we haven't finalized that yet, but stage two will be the creation of a cold storage pump. It will be coming up, that's in a couple of months. So I promise you I wouldn't keep you here long. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'll let you go and relax. Do you have any questions? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you.